episode of Laid Back History. Hey, this is another episode of Laid Back History Road Trip. So we're going to go on the road once again and show you some of the uh, interesting sites around the region. Today, uh, this is a special episode because it is sponsored by the National Road Heritage Corridor. So we thank them for helping to support the Historical Society and, uh, and uh, Laid Back History. Uh, so what are we going to do today? We're going to be traveling down the National Road. Uh, so I think everybody's heard of Route 40 and, and probably the National Road. But I think what most people assume is that Route 40 just followed the National Road. And it did roughly, but it didn't follow it completely, 100%. When they built the National Road, there were sections of it, like going up hills where there were switchbacks, because having um, you know uh, wagons that were drawn by horses, by mules, oxen, they couldn't go straight up some of the steep hills, so they had to have, I forget what the grade was they had to follow, it was like 13.2% or something like that of a grade. They had to follow, and so it, they would switch back up over hills. Well, when they straightened it uh, for automobile travel, they just, they did, they straightened it, they just went straight up over the hills. So there's all these sections along the, the long Route 40 mm -hmm. of the old National Road that you'll be driving down and you'll kind of see this half moon shape come off and come back on, well, that's the old National Road. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're gonna to travel today. We're gonna to go find some of those sections. So we'll go past, we're gonna go from Washington to the West Virginia border. And I am of course joined by Rich and Brian. Uh, I didn't really care if they came, but Rich offered to drive and I said, well, that's cool. So <laughs> Didn't he tell you that it was gonna be special because we were gonna be on here? That was the phone call that I got. <laughs> I I mean, I got one feeling that you just jumped on it with both heels. I mean, you guys are special. So the uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to jump in the in the Jeep, head out of the parking lot. We'll make a left and head towards Main Street of Washington because what a lot of people don't realize is that the National Road, when it came in uh, from the um, from the east, it came into Washington down what is now East Main Street. When it went to Main Street, instead of crossing over it and heading straight like it does now for uh, for 40, it actually made a right, went up Main Street, and then when it hit Chestnut Street, made a left. So that's where we're gonna start, and uh, we'll start our road trip. We got the team back together. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so as we exit the uh, parking lot of the uh, what will be the new Research and Education Center, so we're gonna be heading west. I can't always get this messed up. We're gonna be heading west on, going that way. on 40. <laughs> And so we're basically heading west on the National Road. But as we go towards the stoplight, every, you know, everybody goes straight to stay on, on Route 40. But the National Road actually made a hard right and went up uh, Main Street here in Washington. And so homes like the Bradford House, you know, that we're passing right now, um, and uh, even some of the inns uh, where Mayor's Inn is, there was an older inn that was there where the Observer Reporter building is. Uh, there was an old inn up here on the corner called... Yeah. Called something. The Yellow up. Tavern. Was it the Yellow Tavern? The Yellow oh, Tavern right. with was, Mary yeah. McCammett yeah. uh, actually uh, ran that I was one. I thinking you meant the hotel that was sitting there. Yeah, no, up here where the Observer Publishing yeah. sign actually is was the Yellow Tavern. You had down on... Um, Wheeling Street, you had the Black Bear Tavern, which is where the shooting for the Whiskey Rebellion yes. took place. Uh, where are we stopping now? We're letting people by. Letting the little guy go by. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then we've got the uh, the courthouse, uh, which is just a beautiful, beautiful courthouse. I should do an episode just on the courthouse because it and is then, just gorgeous. Wasn't there recorded. a tavern right here on the corner too? Uh, where the trust building was. Yes. Also run by Mary McCammett. You <laughs> need to make a. No, you don't you need to just go straight, don't you? I'm just yeah. going to let you drive. <laughs> so, Mary McCammett ran that also. What was it called? The Sign of George Washington. Yeah, it was the Sign of the George Washington. Sign of the George Washington, yeah. yeah. So, but the reason that, uh, yes, make the left on on Chestnut. So, when you came up, it, it came up uh, Main Street, then made a left on Chestnut and continued on its way towards Wheeling. Now, I don't think I've ever driven through town that I've hit every light green. <laughs> Brian, do you know, because I always forget this, when did Wheeling actually get its G? Because it was Wheeling for a long time. Really? Yes. Um, well, the Indian name was Wheelunk. Okay. I, well, look at you. Well, and I'm, I'm not going to be able I, to I spell at least, it for you. At least by the Civil War, it was Wheeling. Because okay. you see Wheeling, Virginia in newspapers and things like that. 
I well, just know the, that one the one building down there, the cornerstone, one side says Wheeling, West Virginia, and the other side says Wheeling, Virginia. Yeah. Okay. That's so <laughs> maybe, I don't know. I just know at one point in the 18th century is Wheelin. It didn't have the, the G on it yet. That's so um, oh, there was a point so in time was the where Wheelin Pittsburgh was without the H yeah, on the Maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe, too, maybe so. they took them off at the same time. Because yeah. Pittsburgh got. Pittsburgh had the H and then then lost, lost it, it and, and then, then went got back. it back. Yeah. yeah. And you want to know why I heard that they, they had the H? No. What? I heard it was because that Scotch Irish would know that it was favorable to them. Seeing it spelled that way, I'm telling oh, you the truth. Really? I've heard that. Now, whether that's an old wives' tale or what, but there was something about that that they were amenable to Scotch Irish. Let's okay. put it that way. When you look at uh, the National Road going through Main Street uh, of Washington, the reason the National Road got to be the nickname the Main Street of America is because it was the Main Street of <laughs> so many towns. I mean, look at Claysville, West Alexander, Washington, Uniontown. Even, um, even going further east, Scenery Hill, Hill. Yeah. yeah, you know all Hillsville. of those. It was the main. Yep. What's that? Scenery Hill was known as Hillsboro. Yes, exactly. Changed its name, its name, because down the road was Millsboro, and people kept getting confused. Ah. Mm -hmm. um, then Centerville. That was Centerville. Name. It's it's the main street of all these towns, and so that's why it got its nickname, Main Street of America. Um, this section, you'll see this beautiful sign, the National Historic uh, Historic National Road. So instead of cutting up through, because they couldn't cut over through the hill, so they went kind of up and around it, and it was a lot steeper if you go the other direction. So they, they cut up around it. And so we're gonna show you the direction they went. Up here, um, you know, just circles back around, just on the other side of... Um, spur. A spur. It's a spur. It's a spur. <laughs> What's the name of the hill over here? I'm drawing a blank. Uh, Lincoln. Lincoln, Lincoln Hill, Lincoln thank Lincoln you. Hill. Just right on Lincoln Hill. Old Patch Town. Yeah. Which I wonder how many people honestly realize that that's a cool what patch. is now Roland's Trattoria was the company store. Yeah. As was the building next to it was one of the company houses. Mm -hmm. And then all of the houses behind there, if you drive through that area, they all look the same. Yeah. And that the reason is they were all built the same for the workers for the mine. It, it is a patch town. Right. Very good point, Rich. Thank you. Uh, what's the Lincoln Hill mine? give you an idea how big that mine was another opening for, for it is actually down in Tylerdale mm -hmm. wow yeah one of the openings for the Lincoln Hill mine was in Tylerdale that was a, <coughs> it was a big mine at one point out where I there was the reason why at the reason why console wouldn't come across 221 was because they didn't know where some of the old shafts how far they went yep. for this Lincoln Hill mine yep there wow was I didn't a, know that uh, there was a shaft right down by what used to be the Washington Steel Washington plant mm -hmm. Um, right in between where the buildings that are now raised are and the one building that is still standing. Huh. And my grandfather worked out of that mine. It was the Tylerdale mine. My, actually, my grandfather's brother was killed in the Lincoln Hill mine. Hmm. Oh, wow. There was, uh, they had the section doors that was these big wooden doors that would open. And uh, one of them closed, tripped and closed when it shouldn't have. Oops. So there was a cart going through. Oh, and it started to close and actually pinned him against the cart in the in the door and ended up killing him. So as we come up over the hill, there actually is a nice old tavern that sits up here uh, on the left hand side. Uh, this one right here was known as drawing a blank McGovern's Tavern I believe is the name of it uh, but it was a tavern along the National Road so this is one of the places that you would have been able to stop uh, to have a drink have a meal stay for the night discuss the politics of the days and have conversations and they were the meeting houses yeah and then what did you say Brian it was like a 25 cent thing at one point I thought I remember you selling me one time like for 25 cents you got what a bed oh, to yeah, sleep and, in yeah and, 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 and at one point the the county would set all the rates okay that, mm -hmm. that was interesting that they you were only allowed to charge so much for certain drinks food and, 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 and lodging and things like that okay but I, I, I think it was sometime after the, the revolutionary war that that price fixing ended and actually yeah right here is Wolf's Fort and from what the left. plan I did, we we surmised that unfortunately when they cut the road through, they probably took a good bit part of the fort. 
Yeah. This is probably more coming towards this edge. And Wolf's would have been one of the earliest forts in the county, right? Yes, he was. Actually, I think it was like 1774 or somewhere in there. And he fortified his home. Yes. It was mm -hmm. one of the few that actually mm -hmm. fortified their own home. Yep. And that's probably why we found so much stuff there, was because it was a home. And then the road went up over here as well, uh, here to the right. And we're going that way. Now, if you remember, people that have lived here for a while remember, I don't know, when was this torn down? Maybe Just last summer. Was it no, only last summer? It was only last summer or okay. something. Well, there was another tavern that was here. Uh, there was another stop on the <laughs> on the road. Yeah. What's that? With a pallet of bricks. That's yeah. all the brick from the tavern. Yeah, but it sat right here. Uh, so it was another tavern along the road that unfortunately, yeah, went into disrepair uh, and was it was torn down. Uh, Which was just, a crying shame because that house was absolutely gorgeous at one time. I remember from my youth. It was. Unfortunately, there was just no way to save it. So as we come down over the uh, the hill here, we're going to be coming up to the S Bridge, which, uh, if you guys remember, I did a very impromptu episode last year on the S Bridge because I had some uh, technical difficulties and had to just jump in the car and drive somewhere. So I drove here and talked about the the uh, the S Bridge. But yeah, so we have the historic S Bridge, and then on the left hand side you have the historic Kelly's S Bridge Tavern. Uh, and the home across from here on the right hand side also was here during the, really the nice. time of the uh, of the National Road. And it is just an absolutely beautiful home, both of them. I mean, having them preserved. But the way that bridge, it would have come across and then it would have woven back up. And you can see, so it would have, the way the bridge is shaped, you know, it would have woven, made another turn to the right and then here to the left. And we're just going to pull in a little bit because um, it's kind of a private lane now. But it gives you an idea, you know, how this road, you know, is weaving back and forth up the, um, uh, up this hill. Whereas 40 goes straight, we've got to weave a little bit. And you can see, look at the grade. The grade isn't that bad right through there. No, I mean, you when you compare it to what's what, over here. Yeah, what 40 is, yeah, you're right. Yeah. It's not, I, you know, that's a very good point, Brian. That's why I'm here. That's why we bring him along, that's Rich. Right. It's not so. because he's eye candy. <laughs> Definitely not that. <laughs> So, so let's head, we'll head up 40 because I don't want to drive through these people's private lane. So we are actually driving now on a section of the old National Road that comes up. Uh, if you want to know where we are, we're just uh, at the bottom of the, the entranceway to McGuffey. Rich is making the turn. Yes, I am. Yeah, yeah I made the turn, and there was yeah, nobody behind me. Yeah, this is what I was thinking of. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah this is the but one. this is the old National Road here, which you know is, you know, you can see <laughs> more of what it would have looked like. Yeah, other than the fact that it's modern gravel, this right. isn't too far removed. Actually, it probably would have been more mud. Right. More ruts. <laughs> yeah. There's an old bridge right here. Oh well. Wow. You want to? Yeah, let's yeah, just show Sure. Let's, let's get out and film the old bridge. Yeah. See here as we're coming down, you can see the actual you know, size of the, uh, the old bridge here. I think we get a good look if we come down here. You can see the cut stone, of course, and everything. But, I mean, that gives you a good idea. Now, whether it was built, would you say, when it was originally in, what, in the early 1800s when the road was completed through here? Uh, started 1811, would have come through here around 1818. Could be. They did. Uh, after they built it, then they they did a little more work in it, and they replaced it with the McNa McAdams technique. So okay, but you can see what's interesting. It's pretty wide when you look at it up here. You know, it's um... wait, Rich or the road? Shut up, both. <laughs> you can see where Rich is standing over there. That's the one side of the road, and then the other one's here. So it was pretty wide. Um, 
you know, it's interesting, it's much wider than the S Bridge when you look at it. You know, S Bridge is about what? A single, probably a single carriage coming across. You know, this is this is like two Actually, or three. what's really interesting is consider the fact that this thing's almost 200 years old and it's still in extremely good condition, yep. which says a lot for the workers back then. And they didn't have engineers, they just had guys that knew what they were doing. This right here, you know, you, you can see the cut sandstone at the top, and then everything underneath is just uh, like fieldstone, you know, just yeah. fieldstone taken out and laid in. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and other than that one little corner right there, it's in really good condition. Yep. Falling away a little bit, but hey. After a couple hundred years, it's not too bad. No. Let's see what else we can find. Look at what let's we look go. like. Let's go. Come on, Clay. Years. Let's go. <laughs> So we are coming into Claysville, uh, named after Henry Clay. Uh, was it you? No, no. Statesman Henry Clay. Uh, he was... Uh, better looking. Better looking, probably. Uh, he I, Listen, he got to, to lay in bed with uh, Lydia Shepherd's Boggs or whatever. Oh, Lydia yeah. Shepherd, Bog oh, Shepherd. Oh, the bell of the frontier. Yeah, she he uh, uh, when uh, Colonel Shepherd, Moses Shepherd, wasn't in town, uh, Henry Clay would visit Lydia. So... Uh, but the town was named after him basically because the road came through here because of Henry Clay. He was a big pusher or a proponent of the National Road. Of pushing it further north. Uh, it was going to be further south and very uh, small portion of it was actually going to hit Pennsylvania. It was going to kind of skirt it and then head up the Wheeling. But uh, he pushed for it to be north. Uh, he saw the benefit of it, uh, you know, financially uh, of little towns and stuff along the way. Uh, because it was going to be, you know, the center of commerce mm -hmm. in the United States. And so he pushed to have the road uh, further north, and uh, it worked. And that's, Claysville was laid out before that, but the reason it grew was because of, uh, of the National Road. Mm -hmm. The one tavern we were talking about in Washington, the sign of the George Washington, uh, that Mary McCammon had, actually oh, yeah, yeah. was owned by John Purveyance, who is the one that bought the tract of land called Superfine Bottom, yes. which is what is now Claysville. So I love the names that they gave their properties back in. Superfine Bottom. And there, there were so many of them. They're just so... Very colorful. Col yeah, colorful. That's, that's a good way to describe it. So as we come down over the hill out of Claysville heading towards West Alexander, you're going to see 40 going straight. But the National Road did not follow that direction. It was a more direct route to West Alexander, but it was too hilly. There were steep hills. So instead, it turned here and... Uh, left turn, Clyde? Left turn, yeah. Made a, more of a left turn. Now it was more gradual. It, it's gone because of uh, 70 coming through. Made more of a gradual <coughs> turn. And it came out this way uh, towards West, West Alexander. Old bridge, bridge probably, bridge. yeah. Yep, here's an old bridge. Another old bridge, yeah. Stop and it's as wide as the other one is, yeah. yeah. So yeah. those were all done at the same, so one over those mm -hmm. probably were, were mid-1800s? Probably. They're a later construction, yeah. I would think. <clears throat> That's probably when they when they read it. So they built the road originally, and what happened was it just basically was a was a water pit. I mean it was a mud pit. Yeah. yeah. So they went back and they built it again using the McAdam technique, which is layering sizes of stone and gravel so you start with big stone then you go to a smaller you know grade stone and smaller and smaller and then it's actually domed on top <coughs> so that the middle is higher and the water will run off of it rather than gathering in the center of it which is the same construction they still use today hence the term macadamized road yes here yep. there's another bridge this is a layer this, this one's a little oh yeah, lay, yeah.
Now where we're coming up, Rich, if you want to slow down here, we're coming up to the site of, just pull over here. Uh, this is the site of the toll house, the Alexander uh, toll house. Um, Hence Tollgate Road. Tollgate Road, exactly. So it sat, you know, pretty much where those trees were. This <coughs> is the uh, the site of the old Hunter farm, and this is where the uh, the toll house would have sat. So we're gonna jump out and just do a little bit of filming here. So we'll see you in a second. So we're standing on Old National Pike uh, Road, where it intersects with Tollgate Road. Why is it called Tollgate Road? The Tollgate. Was... Tell us, Mr. Wizard. <laughs> yes, <laughs> the Tollgate was over in this area. Brian and I had come out and done a, uh, well, we were working for, for diggers yeah. and we were gonna maybe come out here and do some uh, some surveying of the property. And we had kind of pinpointed it somewhere between those trees yeah. and that tree, like that 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 other tree that's over there. It was right? still on the, uh, the, the 38 or 1939 aerial. So it's real easy to, you can pinpoint the exact location here then. So uh, basically where the, the newer home behind us on that property yep. is. So, yeah, might have been disturbed a little bit, but it was the Hunter Farm, uh, and those toll houses were every 15 miles. So what happened in 1837, 37? I think 37, uh, when the government decided, you know, they didn't want to fund the road anymore, they turned the portions of the road uh, that were in the states over to the states. So to pay for the maintenance of it, they would put a toll house every 15 miles. When you came up here, there would have been, I mean, a literal toll gate that would have stopped you and you would have had to have gotten out and pay a toll. And uh, it's interesting the way they did it because you would have a sign out front and it would list the tolls that you would have to pay. Mm -hmm. And it was based on the amount of damage that you were doing to the road. That's yeah. basically how they figured out the cost that it would that it would take to fix the road. So if you had a bunch of, bunch of oxen, if you were a drover and you're pushing oxen, you're gonna pay a higher price than if you're pushing a bunch of sheep because the sheep aren't causing as much damage to the right. road. <clears throat> what I always loved is the wagons. Um, it was based on the, the breadth or the width of the oh, wheel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a thinner wheel, you paid more because it would dig in and cause mm -hmm. bigger ruts. And I think it was eight inches it was eight or 10 inches, I can't remember. But if you had a wagon wheel wider than that, it was free. Because wow. they figured if you had a wagon wheel that big, there ain't no way it's going down into the, yeah. it's gonna cause a rut. That's <coughs> a seriously big wagon. It is, can you imagine having a wheel that wide? Yeah. You're, you're uh, can you imagine major. the blacksmith making that oh, thing? Oh my gosh. That he was probably not happy. <laughs> the rim on that would have weighed so oh, much. Oh yeah, I don't know, think about it. I just, think, you're, well, carrying, man, you're carrying a lot of cargo. Well, that's think about how thick the hub is too oh, for something yeah. that. I mean, that's a support that weight. Like that. Yeah. So we're coming into West Alexander now, and we're crossing over uh, Interstate 70. So of course, National Road time, no bridge, because um, no road. <laughs> uh, you would have come straight in. And uh, West Alexander was a was a pretty big town at one point. Uh, you have it's a hub for the uh, uh, for Underground Railroad activities. Uh, in fact, it and Claysville had a little bit of a. Um, love hate relationship because Claysville was more pro southern, yeah. Uh, and, and nicknamed Little Richmond. Thanks, Brian. Yeah. Um, and West Alexander was uh, was an anti slavery town, uh, pro pro North, and uh, so you actually have a battle. And Brian have, I, and I have talked about this together for ten years now that we'd love to find out where the battle was. But there was a battle that took place between people from West Alexander and people from Claysville. Now it was probably more of like a Hatfield McCoy thing yeah. where you're talking about 10, 15 people all together. But there was some sort of battle that took place. And I'm just always curious what it was. But the road comes straight through. Uh, the National or the Route 40 is down to the right here because it completely bypassed um, West Alexander. Which, you know. I don't want to say it was a death nail for West Alexander, but, but it was the combination of first 40 bypassing it, then 
70 coming through and even though it had an exit people started bypassing it and you see this gorgeous town uh you know that started to die a little bit until rich baker moved in mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um. <laughs> yeah but um you know there's some beautiful buildings the church here the uh the um uh Christian church, first Christian church. 1872. Is that the date of it? Okay. Yep. The old schoolhouse here. Or not schoolhouse. Um, bank. Bank. Thank you. The old bank. It's a gorgeous building. The architecture on a lot of these buildings is very impressive. Mm -hmm. um, just like going through Washington. You know, when you're walking through Washington, take the time to look up in the yep. air at the buildings. Yeah. I mean, it's a gorgeous building. <laughs> So we're at the end of our road trip. Yeah. Uh, we have basically hit the uh, West Virginia border. It's what, right back there? Right back on the other side of that little bridge. Right yeah. back on the other side of the bridge. Um, and this is where the National Road comes down out of West Ellick mm -hmm. and hits back up with 40, which is here to our uh, to our right. Uh, but that is the trip from, uh, from Washington down the original uh, National Road here to the West Virginia border. I think at one point it might be nice if we continued on yeah uh, it'd be kind of fun to go down and, yeah go down and show moses shepherd's home yeah, and uh, cool. monument place and some of the like stuff that. there sure. but we also uh what we want to do is we want to head uh east. Head, head east uh back that way because now that would probably be two or three okay, episodes the the and up the okay yeah because yeah. there's a, that's a long <laughs> section there's a lot of portions of it where you get these these little turn offs so so we definitely want to thank the National Road Heritage Corridor uh, once again for sponsoring this episode. That type of support is, is incredible to help us be able to, to bring these pro this programming to, uh, to our audience, but also help with the mission of the Historical Society to preserve and educate on the history and uh, heritage of southwestern Pennsylvania and Washington County. If you would like to help support uh, the Historical Society and programming like Laid Back History and Searchers, which we are uh, going to be uh, premiering season two yep, sometime in May, uh, you can do so by going to uh, wchspa.org and clicking Donate Now. And you can donate directly on our website, either through PayPal or uh, if you want to use a credit card, or you can call the Historical Society at 724-225-6740 and we can take your donation over the phone. So we will see you uh, actually Thursday for another episode of Searchers, and that one is uh, when we took a trip. Is that uh, the snow? It, the snow, the yeah, snow. snowstorm. You broke your camera? I did, I broke my camera because Nathan <laughs> uh, brought me down. Uh, but uh, So we're gonna have that episode uh, on Thursday. That's never gonna get old. I know. <laughs> and then uh, next week we'll have another episode of uh, Laid Back History, which I actually don't know what that's gonna be, so I will uh, let you guys know at a, at a later point. Look for an email if you're signed up or for on our Facebook page. But at any rate, we will see you next week for another episode of Laidback History.